Hi everyone and welcome to the All Things ITSM Global Podcast coming to you from Knowledge 16 in Las Vegas. I'm Kirsty McGowan and I'm here today with Carlos Casanova. Hello Kirsty. Charlie Betts. Kirsty. And it's our pleasure to welcome Jean Kim. Ah, Hi Jean. Great to be here. Thank yeah. you so much. Welcome Jean. Jean, it's so cool that uh, you could uh, drop by and uh, chat with us a little bit. We've been corresponding now, I think, at least for 10 years or more. More than um, that. Yeah, on this whole topic of business of IT and running IT more effectively. You've been through the visible ops journey and then, the, uh, of course, the Phoenix project. And we went through the bar benchmarking journey, yeah, trying the to show the value of journey. controls. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. I still remember the day I walked into my office and there was a padded envelope with a copy of the goal in it and you know, a <laughs> yeah. post-it note from you saying, read this. Um, so. DevOps, obviously DevOps and Agile are becoming enormous transformative influences in the industry. Can you tell me what's top of mind for you now as you look at, especially in light of this conference, the intersection of ITSM and the DevOps movements? A lot of discussion lately. Yeah, oh my God, that's a great question. So in, in my mind, if I were to reframe kind of uh, why, I would sort of ask myself, why am I so interested in how large complex organizations are mobilizing against DevOps. So not so much the Googles, Amazons, mm -hmm. uh, Facebooks, and uh, Etsy's, but more like you know, Raytheon, Macy's, US Department of Homeland Security, mm -hmm. uh, Barclays. Uh, and I think it's because uh, I've had a late kind of understanding that I think the goal is for us to elevate developer productivity so that any engineer in those organizations can be just as productive as if they were at a Google, Amazon, mm -hmm. or Facebook. Um, and uh, there's just no doubt in my mind that where the majority of economic value will be created is in not the unicorns, but the horses. And just because that's where the technology work is, all right. Mm -hmm. So IDC says there's about 8 million developers, 8 million ops people on the planet. You know, I think our goal really is how do we uh, get them as productive as if they were at Google, Amazon, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I think the uh, opportunity for the service management community, uh, which is, uh, I think, created millions of uh, certified professionals, how do we get them uh, to understand what, what the best value of operations is? You cannot have developers be that productive if they're manually configuring servers or if they're manually you know, deploying things in production. So our goal is you know, how do we create those capabilities in these organizations, um, you know, whether we're dev, test, security, or ops, you know, how do we help um, developers get productive? And you know, I think the service management community has so much to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think so. I think so too. Uh, certainly, there's a strong element of you know the whole digital transformation. Software is eating the world. If software is eating the world, it's going to become the major economic driver. Then, obviously, and you know, better enabling that that production of digital value is going to be all to the good. Yeah, one of my favorite, um, I guess, objections uh, mm -hmm. or maybe preconceived notions, I think, from the ITIL service management community is that uh, you know. Oh no, the developers. Oh no, Agile. <laughs> oh no, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, we've been tricked before mm -hmm. by those right. people. Um, I gave a presentation here at uh, Knowledge16 with uh, someone who I've admired for years, uh, Simon Morris, uh, from ServiceNow. So for many years, he was director of development for the service management products, for the SDLC products, service catalog. And, and so he was telling us the, kind of the DevOps journey inside of ServiceNow. And so they're using ServiceNow, obviously, not just for you know, ticketing incidents, but also for backlog management, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, manage the flow of features. Uh, so there's a single um, uh, place where all work items live. And, you know, I think I can think of no better sort of uh, uh, ambassador than someone who <laughs> is a developer by training, has had to span mm -hmm. the DevOps value stream. Uh, at a vendor that is very much associated with the ITIL community, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That right. is helping yeah. the organization win in the marketplace. So that was a very fun, right. yeah. uh, that was a fun and gratifying uh, talk to give. Yeah, yeah, sounds great. I'll have to see yeah. the video of it. Yeah, <clears throat> and I saw one of the one of the tweets that they put out about how you know it's it's transforming into more of the IoT space, and you know it, this is really just kind of. Um, you know, really encompassing everything now. It's not just you know, the IT spaces, it's the whole business side mm -hmm. and the impact on it. And we've, you know, we've mm -hmm. talked about it before, that business outcome. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's, I think, where you know, that DevOps piece has to play in yeah. in order for us to deliver those business outcomes. I don't think we can really get there in the timeframes that we need without mm -hmm. having that there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, it just seems like it's a natural progression that we, ha we have to, to work towards. Yeah, one of my favorite um, sort of red herrings in the DevOps community uh, is this sort of notion about process. I, I think uh, we've talked before about uh, 
uh, someone from Facebook said, you know, our number one uh, thing that we value is people, then automation, and then like number 36 mm. is process. <laughs> and really that's, you know, I don't think that really holds up to reason, right? It's like, you know, uh, you can't do hundreds or even thousands of, you know, code commits and deployments per day without process, mm. right? right? Yeah. What they don't like our mm. approvals, right? And so mm. yeah, I think, uh, you know, the more yeah. that we can sort of separate and not conflate process, which is any sort of right. thing that we mm. do multiple times to get yeah. repeatable outcomes yeah. versus mm -hmm. approvals, right? Which is yeah. uh, uh, transactional friction, uh, sync points. I mean, I think, you know, we like we need a different vocabulary to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, processes is what we do as you know, software engineers. Yeah. You're automating yeah. processes, but since there's no humans involved, then right. you behave in a certain yeah, way. Still processes, yeah. Exactly. But I mean, you yeah. know, from a from an analytic point of view, I think that that's very a very mm -hmm. important insight. You know, but certainly as we see this this pivoting in the workforce, uh, been a, a theme today. Um, from a project management paradigm to a product management paradigm, we do see some different ways that perhaps process is used and consumed. Mm -hmm. And you've talked a little bit about this in the Phoenix Project, just the nature of that, that, that it's all just work and you need to yeah. understand the characteristics of work first. And then that is input into your process conversation. I mean, we see so many teams, it's like, it's just there on my Kanban board. I mean, why do I need to, you know, go through all of this distinguishing between incident, problem change, defect, issue, risk, action item, service request. I mean, you know, I've got, you know, it's all just work. And if it's in the scope of my little two pizza team, I just put it on a sticky note and move it along the columns. But the trouble is, is what happens when you have 300 product teams. Yeah. And so then you do need the service management processes, but what's the appropriate use case for linking the teams together, and when do you say that this requires yeah. an enterprise process? So I've had a late epiphany. <laughs> so um, I spent 13 years uh, at a company called Tripwire. I was a CTO and uh, co-founder there, and we were always trained to ignore the architects. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, and, still talk to me. Right. <laughs> and, and at that time, you were an uh, enterprise architect at Wells Fargo. Correct. And, but I, I think kind of our um, observation, right, rightly so, or rather, you know, the observation I think was true, was that you know, the behavior of architects mm -hmm. were to uh, once a year draw a diagram on a whiteboard. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And then um, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, it's not my problem. I'll right. see you mm -hmm. next year. Right. And you know, uh, what has been so interesting to me is just to see how um, in this benchmarking that really there are three things required to get high performance. It's you need the right architecture, you need the right technical practices, mm -hmm. and you also need the right cultural norms. And so, you know, I think this, all the experience reports at the DevOps Enterprise Summit, which I've been hosting now for uh, mm -hmm. three years running, mm -hmm. shows that architecture is a top level management concern. Architecture dictates yeah. how we work, how the work is done. Right. It also dictates the outcomes we get. Mm -hmm. and, and so in my mind, I just, it is really the age of the architect, right? It's uh, whether it's mm -hmm. Conway's law, it's whether we, how mm -hmm. we design our teams, right. uh, design right. our processes. Yeah. So uh, uh, you were right. All these years. <laughs> well, it's, a, long it's, time. it's a challenge to the architecture community too. Yeah. And you know, my you know, one of the in one of my presentations, you know, on agile and architecture, is like, look, any diagram is only a hypothesis. You know, the idea that you you, you draw it once a year, I mean, to me, that's malpractice. Yeah. You know, it's a hypothesis. Is it working? And how do you fa how do you invalidate? How do you yeah. fail? How do you fail fast? How do you mm -hmm. run the test to hopefully invalidate it? Because you you yeah. know, falsify that hypothesis. Mm. Yeah. Uh, can I share a story? Sure. <laughs> yeah, then, um, yeah, so uh, we're just going through the final rounds of the editing the DevOps handbook, uh, which I'm carrying around uh, mm -hmm. like uh, 10 pounds. But uh, like one of my favorite case studies in there is the um, uh, it's, at, it's at Etsy, uh, but they had this technology mm -hmm. called Sprouter. So the goal was um, you know they had something sitting between the PHP application and the database, and they wanted to have you know, the DBAs and the developers meet in the middle. So they created this sort of middleware called Sprouter. The problem was that it, we, they went from, in order to get anything done, two teams having to do work, to now three teams having to do work, mm -hmm. <laughs> which wow. required this level of synchronization and coordination uh, and prioritization yes. that made almost everything impossible. So every, mm -hmm. and during a deployment, they could never achieve that level of synchronization, mm -hmm. and so thus more site outages, and this is yeah. back in 2009. And, I, and so they talked about taking Sprouter out, you know, killing Sprouter, and thus solving kind of this architectural and work problem by okay. taking Sprouter out. Now, you, uh, now the developers, only the developers need to make the changes, right? Uh, they, uh, so it just said, 
for me, it just really demonstrated, you know, leadership has to be bringing those architectural insights in because <clears throat> the architecture almost preordained these horrible outcomes. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I mean, it dictates your operating model, it dictates your process model, you know, it dictates how you're actually, as you say, the synchronization okay. and cadence issues, which is how I prefer to talk about process. We get so religious about this stuff. And yet, you know, there's a technical, I think there's a technical language we need to use, you know, and, and it gets you having more sensible conversations about these things. And yeah, if you're, you know, your architecture is dictating, you know, uh, the need for synchronization structures that are just not going to work, that, you know, won't scale to the humans or vice versa, then you need to rethink the architecture, absolutely. So, so, what, so was it the, <clears throat> if we look at it, you know, it's not, I, I see it almost as like it wasn't wrong then and it's not wrong now. Mm -hmm. Is it really just the target and scope of architecture where it was looking at them? Was, you know, when I was doing enterprise architecture, we were looking at <clears throat> more elemental oh, level. You too, Carlos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So, <laughs> we, we, we didn't want to spring that on you. <laughs> but you know, but I think that's what it was. I mean, I remember when we did it, we we didn't look past the technical architecture. It wasn't a solution architecture. And I think maybe that's where we've grown from mm -hmm. an enterprise architect perspective. It's not just yeah, you know, the the technology life cycle yeah. and whatnot. It's no. it's the architecture of the full solution. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, yeah. there are pieces in there now. Yes. So I yeah. think maybe, you know, or maybe I'm trying just delusional, hoping <laughs> that we've we've matured to that mm -hmm. to say, okay, you know, business outcome. Mm -hmm. What's the architecture that's going to get us that? So in right. the case of Sprouter, it's like okay, they were mm -hmm. they was already architected to get that solution. Technology was introduced. Maybe it didn't work out. Maybe it gets pulled out and it gets changed. But architecturally, has the solution changed? Maybe, maybe not, because that, you know, that end state is really what they were still going for. So I don't know. I mean, I, that's kind of how I see it almost. Um, just you know, the wrong focus maybe for the, for the architects back in, in our day. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But I, I think, I think the, uh, the learning for me is that these are architectural problems that are yeah. just as important as technical practices yes. uh, and cultural norms. Yeah. yeah, the culture is, that's, that's another three-hour session. Whole other <laughs> conversation. I don't know that we yes, think yeah. we're at time. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, it's, we've had to, we'll have to come to an end. But I mean, yeah. I know we have dozens and dozens more questions we would like to have posed yeah. to you, but maybe another day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much for allowing thanks. me to yeah. barge in. Oh, no, thanks so much for joining absolutely. us, Kim. Thank, thank you, Jean.